Yes. Let me know when you want to start. I'll be companion around two hours. I, you know, I know the, you got a really good hand. She's one of the experienced uh, guides around, really, guys. Very famous around the world. So please, I'll be just, if you need anything to know, just do it. Okay? We're going to try to chat a little bit about the things that you are really interested to know about. This, okay? Thank you, please. Eh? So here we have the profound Inca terracing system. Of the so-called Temple of the Sun, much higher quality, and that is a pre-Inca construction. The last two layers on top were made by the Inca, because this has never been restored. And again, here we have the refined pre-Inca work. And then the Inca work. And again, refined to not as fun. So the main function of this video is to show you the obvious difference between Inca period construction and pre-Inca. The pre-Inca is finer and is the megalithic. It's going to obviously show us that the Inca found this site called Machu Picchu, which means ancient mountain, and then they built around a megalithic core. Uh, there's a the common story that you'll hear from archaeologists and from guides here is the finer work is the imperial Inca work, as in for the, for the high-ranking people. But why do we find um, superior construction lower and inferior higher? Or where do we find prof why do we find profound construction in one spot and right next to it we find inferior? That doesn't make sense whatsoever. So now you're going to see the most obvious difference between Inca and what came before. With an Inca repair above. Inca repair on top of the megalithic. Now the reason I'm saying Inca repair is because I ask the people who work here and the officials what has been restored and what has not been restored in modern times. And it's only the ones that have not been restored in modern times and are from the Inca time period that I'm looking at in terms of saying upper part crude Inca, lower part more profound pre-Inca who were they? Maybe they were called the Pirwas. That's where Peru gets its name. We honestly don't know. But we do know that the Inca recognized that there were technologically more profound people than them who had been here in the very distant past.
Okay, now that megalithic structure in behind me, I was here with an American geologist. I said, what caused the right wall to sink? She said, an earthquake somewhere between 9 and 9.5 on the Richter scale. And she said, if that building was contemporary with the rest of Machu Picchu, all of Machu Picchu will have, would have been destroyed. So she said, that tells you that that structure is older than the rest of the Machu Picchu site. Come, come. And this is the most complex stone at Machu Picchu. Look at the number of angles. So finally, we're going to see the most iconic thing at Machu Picchu, and that is this protrusion called the Intihuatana, which translates as meaning the hitching post of the sun. It's a, a calendar system. Uh, it wasn't simply used for the solstices and the equinoxes. It was probably used year-round because the most profound thing for the Inca was the growing of agriculture. And so they needed accurate calendars in order to be able to calculate from year to year, from place to place, how much productivity in terms of food was being done. Because having a huge food supply means that you can have an advanced civilization. So that will be the last aspect of what we'll look at here. My 61st visit to Machu Picchu. Okay, good. Our guide, Senior oh, Felix. So the Intihuatana, or hitching post, again, the most famous feature here at Machu Picchu. There are big cameras every course, so they're being controlled by this.
exhaustion is getting. the ancient megalithic site of Oyante Tambo, and here you will see two styles of construction. One being Inca, which is the more recent, and the other is the megalithic, because the Inca found the site of Oyante Tambo, and then they built their constructions. What you'll definitely see is that the oldest construction is far superior to that of the Inca, made by an unknown ancient civilization. Our guide today is local wisdom keeper Wilco Apasa from okay. Cusco. I explained uh, in the spiritual uh, explain, no? Here. Yeah, the question is um, these big stones the is possible the Incas doing? Mm -hmm. Or the other ancient ancient uh, ancient civilization, all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I perceive more uh, pride to the, with what machines is possible to cut these rocks, no? Right. So compared to other Inca locations where the foundation is megalithic, this is the opposite. That's the megalithic up there. So you near the very top, and then lower down on the left you see repair work, and then all of this terracing stuff is all Inca. So the theory is that there was the, the most ancient construction is up there. Then there was a cataclysmic earthquake that caused all of this stone here to fall down. And so the broken pieces the Inca used for some of the walls and some of the staircases, uh, so the most profound stuff we'll see is up on top there, the so-called sun temple. And the front and back walls are relatively intact, but the side walls, the earthquake came this way east to west. So the side walls blew out and then tumbled down this side and then the other side. Yeah, well actually Oriente Tambo has a masculine aspect and a feminine aspect. So this mountain, this is the male part here. And then this is, this whole thing here is the feminine. And it is kind of difficult. Well, what's obvious is you look on the right hand side, you see that huge structure that again was a storage facility for potatoes and corn because the wind always blows here so it air dries and then on the left hand side there you see that other big building which is the temple of Viracocha so that was a sacred site to the creator god called Viracocha and what most people it takes them a little bit of time to see is right in between is the on um, the little out that little piece that juts out? More. If you look down below that, okay. you see it's the profile of a human face. Uh. So you see the eye, the nose is gone, the mouth is there. His cheekbones are dark gray. Right. And then, yeah. and then he has a little temple as a crown on top of him. Uh. So he's looking this way because he's the male protecting the female. Okay. And the female is productivity. All of the, you know, all of the food, royal Inca food is produced here and then taken up there in order to be stored. So this is called the Temple of the Chosen Women, or the Temple of the Virgins of the Sun. They were the most extreme example of the Divine Feminine. They prepared the food for the Inca, they knitted the Inca's clothes, they were the only ones who could physically come in contact with the high Inca people. The commoners were not allowed to touch them. And so this, you would think, for such important people, that the finest level of craftsmanship would, would have been done. But as you can see, it's adobe and stones and stuff. 
So this shows you that this is high level Inca construction, which is not megalithic, which indicates to us that the megalithic is not Inca. But what's important here is that during winter solstice, the sun rises directly in this window. And so in here you have earth, air, fire, as in the sun, and then water, you have the four elements. So here you have <coughs> standard Inca wall and then strange cutouts in bedrock which are inexplicable. So at winter solstice the sun rises here and shines right there. So could that be for someone sitting and absorbing energy in a specific way? We're now heading towards what is called the temple of the condor, because there is the profile of a condor, natural of course, on the side of this mountain on the back side. This, this, is yeah, this, is this is interesting, though, because this is another example of how the Inca recycled, I think, recycled a site. They didn't, they probably didn't do, the, they may have done this work, but maybe not. But at noon, around noon on winter solstice, the sun is right here, and it shines, casts a shadow on that knob there, and it goes right into that slot. Right down what? there. Really? Yeah, because you can see the slot is not as well done as the knobs, but that's, you know, they saw the effect happening and they went, oh, on this day this happens, let's cut a notch there. So that'll remind us of winter solstice.
Once quit job run. Have a run? Yeah, against yeah. the wall there. Cool back. So here we have a problem. If you could move that stone all the way from the quarry, why wouldn't you make this one fit with that one? Why would you fill in rubble like that? Some design on the corner there. So here at Oyente Tambo, you saw two very obvious styles of construction. And for those who have seen my videos before, I don't even have to tell you. But the inferior work was done by the famous and brilliant Inca culture. But the megalithic work was something they found in place when they discovered this site approximately 1,000 years ago. So the history of Peru is far older, far more complex, and far more fascinating than most people realize. And the same is true, of course, of Egypt. Before the dynastic Egyptians, there were the great builders who created the Giza pyramids as well as other structures. And now it's time for us to just wake up to that fact that many academics have uh, taught us history wrong and the history has to be rewritten by those of us who are interested in the subject. I mean, uh, feet, I mean, no, Brian, sorry. Yeah, got, got yourself Run. all worked up. <laughs> Thank you. 
Again? Now, some people think that that acoustic thing that we do is corny and it's new age and whatever. It's not. What it is doing, it is showing you that these recesses are tuned to a specific sound. Likely the sound ohm and the vibration of the planet itself is several octaves below that. So,